The functional language that we're going to learn in CS3110 is called OCaml. I think OCaml is a pretty good language for writing beautiful programs. People always want to know what the name means. I'm going to tell you, but I'm also going to warn you, it's not helpful to know. The O in OCaml stands for objective. It's because there was an object-oriented layer that was added to the original language. We're not even going to use the object-oriented features of OCaml this semester, so that doesn't matter to us at all. CAMEL is the especially unhelpful part. It's an acronym. It stands for Categorical Abstract Machine Language. See, I, I told you it wasn't helpful. Okay, so what the name is good for, though, is that it gives me lots of opportunities to have clip art of camels in this course. So I will take advantage of that extensively. OCaml belongs to the ML family of languages. Let me clarify, I do not mean machine learning when I say ML in this class, despite how all of you are probably gung-ho to learn some machine learning. The ML family of languages originated as a meta language. That's where the ML there comes from. The meta language for a tool, a theorem prover, actually. It was a meta language for writing proofs. These days, that's not how we're using it, of course. We're using it to write general purpose programs. I think there's a lot of reasons why OCaml is awesome. You can read about these in the course textbook. You can also read about them in another book called Real World OCaml that's linked from the syllabus. But I'm not going to talk through these points right now. Right now, it would be too abstract. Instead, what I'd like to do is come back at the end of the semester and talk in detail about these. So I'm making you a promise right now that I hope to pay off in a few months which is that we will eventually talk about these reasons why OCaml has been awesome for us throughout the semester. But no language is perfect, and that's important to bear in mind as we start learning OCaml. Languages are tools, and you should use the right tool for the right job. I'm reminded of a time <laughs> that my father-in-law needed to fix a modem card inside of a computer, and instead of using a screwdriver, as he should have, decided he would somehow use a hammer. That did not go well. I'm also reminded of medieval pole arms. I like to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a bit of a nerd. I have a long-running family campaign that I've DM'd for Friday nights for many years now. And, you know, in D&D, you roll dice. You pretend to have combat with weapons. And there's a bunch of weapons you could use, some of them being pole arms, these long shafts with some kind of blade attached at the end. These all have specific purposes throughout history as they were invented, had different uses in battle, but they're tools. You use the right tool for the right job. There's no universally perfect tool. See how many pole arms got developed. And there's no universally perfect programming language. So please understand, although I enjoy programming in OCaml, I am not trying to tell you that it's perfect. OCaml happens to be good for this course because it has a good mixture of functional and imperative features. We will start off being able to use a purely functional language, and then later on in the semester, we'll be able to incorporate in isolated ways some imperative features. It's relatively easy to reason about the meaning of programs in OCaml, especially because you can use it mostly as a functional language, and we will do proofs about programs this semester. OCaml isn't perfect. There's no perfect tool. There's no perfect language. And there are some hurdles that we need to get over because there will be features that you miss from whatever languages that you've used in the past. 
There are going to be annoyances based on your expectations about how a language should work. So as someone who has guided many people through learning OCaml and functional programming, I am going to ask you to try and set those annoyances aside. It's okay to have those feelings, absolutely. Just try to recognize them, acknowledge that frustration, and set it aside eventually it will pass. I promise you, you're going to get there. Along the way, all I ask is that you try to keep an open mind and have fun. Because I think there's a lot of fun to be had in learning functional programming and in learning OCaml.